Welcome. Hey, but boy, am I glad I am here. Good what, to see you, you sir. You are your butt. <laughs> Yeah, and my bladder. Yeah. <laughs> Your bladder too, yeah. Well, welcome to Viking. Well, thank you. Yeah, actually, this is my first time here. It is. I asked Alyssa that this morning. Is that the first time Bill has been here? So, well, congratulations on a good flight. You've always come to me in the past. That's right. <laughs> it's good to see you, Sebastian. <laughs> you look great. Steve flies uh, Airbus for a living. Yeah, he's flying a Viking 150 in a Zenith 750 stall. Well, welcome to Florida. Hey, thanks. It's good to be back. Going towards nighttime the day before, we were able to put a few airplanes into the hangar and celebrate with friends. The day before the big gathering of the yearly biking workshop, Dave's airplane, Alyssa's desk, biking all cleaned up engine sitting at the welding station getting its intake duct completed. Some 150s, some 130s, some 90 horsepower. Wow. <laughs> How's your flight today, Dave, and where do you come from? Ah, today was great. Came from Friendswood and brought Bill Fahey with me. It was a uh, seven hour something flight. Smooth air, blue skies. You guys, Very relaxing. we were watching you guys on on the big screen, 152 over the ground. 152, yeah. Well, that's awesome. Probably so you came from, time. not everybody knows where Friendswood is. South of Houston, south of Houston. Okay, and from there to Florida, it's a pretty big haul for a little plane, isn't it? Uh, normally it takes me about 10 hours to get here, and we did it in a few hours less today because of the tailwind. Very smooth air. How did the Xena Cruiser treat you? Uh, I, I love this plane, I really do. I, just, <laughs> I, I, I look forward to flying it every time I get into it. This is, yeah, if you don't have one, you need to build one, absolutely. We got this guy over here. You flew uh, your own plane to biking as well, huh? Yeah, only uh, 230 miles. It took us all day and we only burned fuel out of one tank. I know, South, North South Carolina? South Carolina. Bottom of South Carolina. So that's nothing. Beautiful. <laughs> I mean, that's almost Florida. 232 <laughs> miles. Yeah, we're two hours north of Jacksonville, and it took us all day to get here. And and Dave and Bill fly all the way from Houston in a day. <laughs> well, but you got those big giant slats on the front. Yeah, I, I guess if that's what you'll call it. But, yeah. And we started late. Uh, we didn't get off. You do like to you do like to sleep in. We're not morning we, people. We always start. Late. No. Yeah. I don't know what it's <laughs> I don't know what it's like. like I don't know what it's like to always. land at this place before dark. <laughs> That is true. Second time. Second. First time you came here with a Zenit 750 with a little engine in it and you got it upgraded. People have seen that video. Yeah. And then uh, you landed after dark that time and you I, landed after dark this time. Thank God for friends like you to be standing out there with your, your uh, the lights on on your cell phone so I know where to park. Yeah. All right, well. There's going to be a lot of good times tomorrow. We're getting people, hopefully about 30 people. I think there was 40 signed up. Awesome. What, next day after tomorrow? Yeah, we got a whole extra day for everybody. So we got like a whole other day to prepare for this. I know. Lucky you, because you're behind. <laughs> well, what, uh, what do I got left to do? You don't want to know. There's a list? Yeah, a long one. That's the smallest. <laughs> That's the smallest. We'll make sure you check it's the very it. smallest. Well, this is the real life of biking aircraft engines. And all you guys out there that still have a little bit of time, it's never too late to make it here unless you're flying a stall. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did a lot in those two days prepping. We had people coming in early, hanging out, sharing stories, going flying, showing them the floor of the coast. A lot of nice things to see flying here where we live. Making camaraderies. Dave and Alyssa went up. Uh, she got to fly the cruiser with Dave. Power parachute guys were showing up from up north. And they were going to tour the country. Updated a couple of things like the muffler. And off you went. It's running good now. All right, good. Jan good. stands behind his work. <laughs> well, we did today. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay guys, you're live and on camera. What's happening here? Hey Dave, what you doing? We are switching out fuel level sensors from a capacitant to a resistant uh, for better accuracy in flight. And whenever you swap fuel from uh, auto gas to av gas, uh, these float style will give you an accurate level whereas capacitants, uh, it was pretty much useless whenever you switched fuel, your calibrations went completely off. So since we were here and had time, we're taking advantage of uh, the knowledge and the manpower <laughs> to do it. And the parts. Um, we have the, we have recessed uh, fuel flanges and the fuel cinders that go in and we've been putting a lot of those in the Zenith aircraft, something we have very specific for them. And uh, sometimes we even ship them to Zenith and they weld them in for us too. Uh, for customers uh, with instructions, so. Yeah, so these you have, you, uh, we pulled the tanks today and y'all welded them up for me today. Yep, um, thank you, Jerry the welder, yeah, your top you notch. Much. So that, that's great service, man, you can't beat that. Yeah, so on a whim, Dave decided to do something and we made it happen here at Viking. <laughs> we made dreams come true, right? <laughs> Now, of course, kind of like when you go to Zenith for their gathering, it's not really a sales event, but you can't help but having some people listen to, you know, the engine starts and seeing the engine runs and stuff come up to you afterwards and said, you know, I heard a lot of good thing is, but once I saw it run, that's, that's really what made me want to put down a deposit on one of your engines. And then, of course, our friends that fly in from Houston and other places in the country showing that the engines are capable of going hundreds of hours in a couple of years. It, it all adds together to get a good warm feeling about the Viking engines. be the same if at the end of the day we didn't all go out to the runway people can get rides watch the airplanes fly and hear the engines and see the performance of the engines and that's always a highlight of the day
of course, there's the engine pickups. It's a nice way to get an engine without paying the truck to bring it to you. we had our normal gatherings where we all sit around and listen to talk about gearboxes and fuel systems and parts that go into the Viking engines, maintenance, talk to owners, how they maintain and fly and operate their airplanes, visiting members from propeller manufacturers that talk about the types of propellers that are usable on the Viking engine that, that perform well as a ground adjustable and a variable pitch propeller and builders and flyers doing seminars on their own, talking to people about their experiences using the Viking engine. Looking around the shop, using some of the tools, looking inside gearboxes, putting some bearings in, seeing how the engine is assembled, and then in the evenings going out together for maybe have a beer or something at a local brewery. And then there's an end and people start disappearing. Here's Bill Fay taking off. He's uh, leaving a day after Dave Talama because of weather and they fly to different destinations. Here's him leaving full of fuel and he's heading for Bernie, Texas. It's a long ways in a Zenit cruiser. Then Steve was the next to leave with his wife they're only going up to South Carolina. Beautiful airplane that used to have a Viking 110 engine in it. Steve purchased the airplane and had the engine replaced with a Viking 150. Now be sure to reserve some time for January 2023 to come and visit us for the next time we host a Viking workshop in Florida.